Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I would like to show you how to shade character faces in Affinity Designer using simple shapes, gradients, lines and blur along with layer blend modes to create soft shadings for character faces like these samples I designed for a mobile phone game earlier this year. The key areas are the shading around the eyes, the nose and the cheeks as well as under the chin and the ears. I will take a look at the colors, how to pick the right skin tone and how to shade the skin tone with highlights and shadow colors using some quick color mixes. One of the main factors when shading is the position of your light sources. In this case, we have the light come straight at the face as well as having two rim lights that give us more volume and definition. I won't start from scratch but use an unshaded face with nose, eyes, mouth, eyebrows already in place. If you're unsure about your skin tones, you're either too light, too dark or too saturated, look for reference images find skin tones used by other artists, start with those and then go into shading and creating your own. I added a few samples posted with this tutorial on the website. An easy help when it comes to mixing colors is create a shape and overlay it with the shading tone in various degrees of opacity. Just changing the colors of that one gives me the shaded colors. I can then go in with the color picker. On top of that, I can change the blend mode and get warmer tones, for example, by changing to overlay. Play around with it. It can be a cool little helper. Before we get started shading, let's have a quick look at the setup of the face. There's the mouse, the eyebrows, the eyes, all locked so I don't accidentally work over them. We have the nose which is a part that needs some editing. The head, the ears are curves that contain clips already. We'll be working inside those to add more clips for our shading. The first shape to add to this clip is a copy of the head itself. That way I can have the initial shading by giving the head a darker tone and putting the lighter copy inside. Next up, I'll add some color to the cheeks. Don't worry about not getting the color right the first time. The big advantage of working with vectors is the ease with which you can change them. I turn the shape into a symbol, mirror it that way. Whenever I'm working in the symbol, I work on both sides of the face at the same time. I use lines with tapered stroke for the highlights and the shadows around the eye. Duplicating and recoloring and changing from add to multiply makes it quick and easy. Having a reference image at hand makes it easier to shade the character in a less generic way. Larger shapes I create with the pen tool, go in with the note tool, color them, blur them and add a transparent gradient to them. Quite often it's easy to create the shapes from basic elements like circles or rectangles or duplicate existing shapes and modify them. By adjusting the opacity of the objects I can tone them down a little bit. That way it's easy to soften the face, especially in a female face. You want to avoid strong lines. With the pen tool I create the rim lines, giving them tapered ends, a blur to soften them, adjust the opacity and use a smaller copy to highlight the cheekbone. Similar lines add depth to the chin and the mouth. Again, I adjust the opacity to soften them. Using a blurred circle, I create the highlights on the forehead and the chin. Duplicates make it a lot faster to reuse the settings once you have adjusted them. Changing the color and adjusting the blend mode turns the highlight of the chin to a shadow under the lips. Next, I'll be working on the ears. I turned those into symbols as well, so I just have to work on one ear and the other side gets mirrored. I blur the existing shapes, add more shadows 
add the lines we used for lights in the cheeks and make them highlights on my ears. That leaves us with the nose. First up, it gets a shadow underneath, a blurred shape that is adjusted and duplicated for a more intense look. A deformed circle forms the highlight on the ridge of the nose. Two lines on either side give the nostrils a little bit more shape. The advantage of working with tapered strokes is simply the editing speed. I just need to move two nodes to get them right. I add highlights to the nostrils and then give the nose a reddish tint. Once again, the base color seems too bright, but changing the opacity and the layer mode allows me to adjust this easily. Simple circles at the tip of the nose give me the necessary highlights and the shadow line just above brings out the pointy character of the nose. Finally, I blur the existing shapes to soften those and we have our shaded face. It is generic, but I hope this explains the process. By using a mirrored symbol, simple shapes, pressure adjusted strokes, it is fairly simple to create a nice shading. Play around with the techniques shown in this video, add more contrast, add more highlights, change the light source, and most of all, have fun with your creation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again soon.